Okay, hello and welcome everyone. So this video is called A Simple Introduction to Game Theory and also Solving Matrix Games. And so uh, don't worry about all this text here. You can read it if you want, it's interesting. So I wrote up this simple introduction to game theory, quite literally, and it's got a couple of examples and game matrices that I want us to be able to solve. So that's all that's doing here. <laughs> so video is gonna be way more interesting than just, um, just this text. Anyway, so what I wanted to do is I want to take a moment to give us an overview into thinking about what are we doing with game theory in the first place? And the idea is, you know, go through an economics class, you think about supply and demand model, perfect competition, think about monopoly, and none of those situations have anything to do with um, helping us get to understand how to analyze strategic decision making, right? Interdependence, when you have, you know, two entities making choices with the expectation that they're gonna be mutually responding to each other's choices in the first place, right? Supply and demand model doesn't handle that situation, nor does monopoly, because there's just one firm in the market. Uh, thinking about market structures, game theory is particularly useful for oligopoly, but it's way more useful and way cooler than just being able to help us figure out like, you know, how oligopoly firms interact. The idea with game theory is we're trying to think about a way to capture the strategic interdependence. Right? So to be able to model a situation as a game, you've got to have a set of players. So basically who's in the game, you've got to have a set of what they can do, strategies, and then what can happen, right? So payoffs, right? So if we have players, strategies, and payoffs, we could write down a game. Usually we'll think about the game as being represented by, you know, concisely in a matrix form or in a game tree form. Although we can also see games that don't rely on either because all you need after all is player strategies and payoffs. The idea is we're thinking about, we wanna come up with a good way to capture the strategic interdependence of the combination of strategies the two players are selecting. So the example I like to use is I like to think about a particular game. I said, suppose we have two players, you and me playing catch but with a twist, right? So envision a situation where you and then a partner are standing your backs to each other, but 20 feet away. And in front of each of you is a table. In front of the first person is a table that's got a basketball and a softball, right? So, uh, so basketball, you know, be about so big, softball, a little bit smaller, I'll show pictures in a second. Uh, the other person on their table, they just have a single softball glove. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna turn around simultaneously having made your selection and then, you know, kind of play catch sort of immediately. Right, so if you've got the balls on your table, you're gonna turn around with one of those balls and then put it in the air kind of as you finish turning. And if you have the glove, you're gonna choose either to use the glove to catch what's coming your way or putting up two hands, right? It turns out, so if you're trying to catch a basketball, oh, that's a softball. If you're trying to, trying to catch a basketball, the proper way to catch a basketball is, you know, basketball's about so big is to uh, stand here with this look of exuberance or perhaps sheer terror Right, I'm not quite sure which, but you know, catch the ball. Actually, maybe you probably would actually want your hands a little bit more like this, right? So think about a little bit better form for catching it. Although maybe this turns out okay. Oh, it says cheerful. Okay, so cheerful. So not terror, not terror, cheer. Okay, good. This is a little bit slightly better. This is a little bit. This is probably the best form, right? You want to bend at the knees probably to you know anyway be able to turn and spring or dribble or whatever. Whatever. So that's how you catch a basketball optimally with two hands. Though you could catch with one hand if you need to. Here's how you catch with a, catch a softball, right? So catching a softball, here's a softball glove, and then that doesn't show what a softball is. So, okay, so this would be a softball, but so big, right? This is the catchers, quite literally. And then, uh, I mean, kind of whatever are the uh, softball type moves necessary to be able to catch the ball when it's just out of reach. Obviously, it's gonna be a lot easier to catch this thing just out of reach if you've got this glove on than if you've got a bare hand, is the idea. Okay, so that's catching a softball and catching a basketball. So we're thinking about this game, and you know, clearly, if you knew, hypothetically, which was coming in your direction, you're the person that's gonna catch the thing, if you knew that the basketball was gonna come your way, you're gonna for sure wanna catch with two hands. Um, if you know the softball's coming your way, you're for sure gonna wanna catch with the glove, right? Not just a bare hand. Um, you know, on the other hand, if, you know, I'm the person or you're the person throwing or whatever, the person throwing the ball, if you know the person attempting to catch your throw is catching with two hands, you'd rather throw the basketball. If you know the person attempting to catch your throw is going to have a softball glove, you're going to want to throw the softball to them, 
right? And so this is capturing actually a fundamental concept necessary to be able to analyze and understand how to solve a game, namely a best response. And so the, so the, the definition of a best response is, you know, if you have a collection of, you have a collection of strategies available to you, Conditional on what the co-player has selected, if one of your strategies is going to do better, lead to a better outcome relative to your other strategies, that strategy that does best is your best response. So in the softball and basketball game, right, your best response to my throw of the basketball is to catch with two hands, right? Yet you could catch with a glove, but that's not your best option. It's not your best response. Right? And if, you, if I throw the softball, your best response is the catch with the glove. You could try to catch with two hands. Might work out okay, but more often than not, you'd be better served catching with the glove. Your best response to my choice of throwing the softball is glove. And then flip side, my best response to your choice of, so of catching with a softball glove is for me to throw the softball. My best response to your choice of catching with two hands is to throw the basketball. Right? And... It turns out we can define an equilibrium in the game. Uh, equilibrium, if we want to take the Nash equilibrium solution concept, right? Solution concept is a convention for how to solve the game, a prediction, how we think players ought to play the game. Nash equilibria requires that players are mutually best responding. An outcome is an equilibrium, specifically a Nash equilibrium, if we are both mutually best responding. Right? So there's a collection of different outcomes. It could be I throw the softball, you catch with two hands. I throw the softball, you catch with glove. I throw the basketball, you catch with two hands. Or I throw the basketball, you catch with glove. There's four possible outcomes for the game. But there's only two that are stable for equilibria. And one way to build that intuition is to say, well, firstly, if we're both mutually best responding, we've got the equilibria. But namely, because nobody would be served by switching, being the only one to switch, right? Like if I've thrown the softball and you've already got the softball glove, you don't want to real quick rip the glove off your hands and then catch two hands, right? Or if I've thrown the basketball, you don't want to real quick reach behind you and pick up the softball glove. No, you wouldn't change your strategy. You would be already best responding with two hands for a basketball coming your way or a glove for a softball coming your way. However, if the basketball was coming and you had the glove, now you'd want to change your strategy. You would not currently be best responding. And so the outcome of me throwing you a basketball and you catching with a softball would not be a best response, sorry, would not be us mutually best responding. So it would not be a Nash equilibria. Or if I throw the softball and you're catching with two hands, you would want a quick switch, grab the glove. So me throwing the softball, you catching with two hands. Uh, is not a Nash equilibria either. So I can model this with a game matrix, and I've done this right here. I gave us payoffs, right? We've got to have players. So one of us is controlling the rows, the other one's controlling the, the columns. We've got to have strategies, so throw basketball, throw softball, or catch with two hands, or catch with glove. And then we've got to have payoffs. And our convention for the payoff table is the first number goes to the row player, the second number in a given cell goes to the column player. So if, if, if it's the case that I throw the basketball, you catch the, you, oh, I turned my alarm on. Sorry. It's going to interrupt my video and I'm not going to edit that out because I'm just not going to do that. So if I throw the softball, if I throw the basketball and you catch with two hands, uh, you get a, if you, I throw the soft, I throw the basketball, you catch with two hands. I get a payoff of one. You get a payoff of one. Or if I throw the basketball, you catch with a glove. You, this is my payoff of zero. That's your payoff of zero right? Or I throw the softball, you catch with two hands, that's my zero, that's your zero. Or I th throw the softball, you catch with the glove, that's my one, that's your one. And all I I'll solve a different game in a second. All I wanted to do is call attention to the fact that we could model this thing with a game matrix. Turns out our two Nash equilibria are apparent in this game. It's the case where we each get a payoff of one. We could solve that real quick looking for best responses. And the idea is, well, if I'm throwing the basketball, do you want to use two hands or a glove? Well, if you, if you use two hands, you get one. If you use a glove, you get zero. So you'd rather use two hands and then catch, catch the basketball with two hands. You get a payoff of one. If I throw the softball, what would you rather do? Catch with two hands and get a payoff of zero or catch with a glove and get a payoff of one? No, you'd rather get a payoff of one. You'd catch with a glove. 
What about me? If you're catching with two hands, I, I know that you're catching with two hands. I would rather throw you the basketball because then I'll get one. Whereas if I throw the softball, I'd get zero. Or if I see you throwing, if I see you with the glove, I'd rather throw the softball because then I get a payoff of one and um, I get a payoff of zero if I were to throw the basketball. A couple things here. What I, what I just did to find those equilibria is I was seeking out best responses. And when I was seeking out best responses, I looked purely at my own well, I looked at the payoffs for the player under consideration. So when I was choosing, when I was determining w whether you should take the left column or right column, we were looking at just your payoffs within that, within the corresponding row choice that I would have made, right? So we were comparing this zero with this one if I threw the softball, and we were comparing this one with this zero if I threw the basketball. Then when I was selecting which row corresponding to what would be best given the column you'd selected, two hands, then I'd look at this one versus this zero, or if you'd used glove, I'd look at this zero versus this one, right? All right, so I've got one more game I wanna talk about. So this one actually, the previous one is a coordination game. This is a coordination game, there's two equilibria, right? So we wanna think about you know, how we lead to a good equilibrium. Probably we'd solve that by communication. We'd say, you know, let's play softball, let's play basketball. Or if I noticed that you were a softball player or had a basketball jersey, right? That might help us coordinate on the particular sport. Uh, this is a game that's actually a prisoner's dilemma. We'll see that in a second. But now I've got row player selecting top or bottom row. I've got column player selecting left or right. The first number in each cell goes to the row player. So row player's payoffs are all odd. The second number in each cell goes to column player. So column player's numbers are all even. Zero's even, right? All right. So... All right, let's look for best responses. Hypothetically, if column player has selected left, what does row player want to do? Well, row player could select top and get five or bottom and get seven. They'd rather get seven. So they'd rather, so we'd, we'd actually underline seven. And I'll, do, I'll show that in a second. Uh, if column player had selected right, what does row player want to do? Well, they could select top and get one or bottom and get three. Well, they'd rather select... Uh, they'd rather select the bottom row and get three rather than one. So we'd underline. So let me show this right here, show the underlines. So what we've found is we've justified, uh, we found that left was a, so we, bottom row was a best response to column player selection of left column for row player. And then row player's best response to column player's choice of right was also bottom because three is bigger than one. What if row player has selected top? Now we're focusing on the top row. How does column player best respond? Oh, it's already underlined. Column player best responds by selecting right because eight is bigger than six, right? And if, column, if row player has selected top, column player is only looking at two numbers, just six versus eight, because that's all column player is responsible for, for controlling, whether we go in the left row or the right row. Now, if row player has selected bottom, Column player is going to look at this zero versus this two. Oh, two is bigger than zero. So row player selecting bottom means column player is going to best respond by selecting right. Uh, two underlines across a single row or column, right, indicate that that strategy is a dominant strategy for that player. Dominant means it's going to be always a best response. So bottom is a dominant strategy over selecting bottom row is a dominant strategy for play for row player because bottom row is always better than top row or right is always a dominant strat is a dominant strategy for column player because right is always better than left for a column player if you have two underlines in a cell now you've got a nash equilibrium nash equilibrium remember requires that players are mutually best responding and we found that the underlines show where the best responses are here they're both best responding so this is going to be a Nash equilibrium, right? The idea is, you know, any place else we could be, yeah, we'd rather have five or six, right? The problem is if we, let's say we talked about this and I said, okay, I'm going to select the top row. You're going to select the left column. Well, that's exactly, if I believe that you've selected the left column, that's exactly what I want to, I want to defect. I want to deviate. I want to select the bottom row and then I get seven. Or exactly when you think I've selected top row, right, is when you'd want to change your mind and select right, because that's when you'd get your highest payoff. So this is not stable as an equilibrium, even though there's higher payoffs 
if we do top left than if we do bottom right. Nevertheless, the Nash equilibria is right here, bottom right. So importantly, Nash equilibria only cares that we're mutually best responding. So this is my few crucial points. So the process explores the hypothetical outcomes for a player given the potential choices of their co-player. So we're considering simultaneous games, meaning neither player observes the choice of the co-player that's actually being, when the game's actually being played. However, if they knew, then for the purposes or for the purpose of finding best responses, we consider how they would respond if they knew what was what the co-player had selected. In finding best responses, we focused only on their payoffs. So when I was finding row players' best responses, I only was looking at the respective odd numbers, right? Do I want top row or bottom row if column player has selected left, or do I want top row or bottom row when column player has selected right? It's bottom row in both cases, right? Uh, both players have a dominant strategy. That's not true in general, right? In the first game, in the uh, in the basketball softball two hands glove game, there's no dominant strategies. There's not one single strategy that's always a best response. Because in this game, it's a coordination game. My best response depends on what you're doing, and your best response depends on what I'm doing. In this game, there is a uniformly always best response, a dominant strategy, right? Uh, players will always have best responses, but they need not always have dominant strategies. The Nash Equilibria doesn't give the highest payoff in this game. That's okay. Nash Equilibrium requires only that players are mutually best responding. And actually, this is a prisoner's dilemma because they both have a dominant strategy. And if they were to play their non-dominant strategy, namely top left, joint payoffs would be maximized. And we can see that this is the only time you do this, but we can check to see this is a prisoner's dilemma by summing up 3 plus 2 is 5. Uh, 1 plus 8 is 9, 7 plus 0 is 7, but 5 plus 6 is 11. The sum of joint payoffs telling us that we're mutually best off between the two of us. We're best off to play top left. But nevertheless, we have individual incentives that are in conflict with those group incentives. Definition of a prisoner's dilemma. And so the cooperate the cooperative equilibrium isn't isn't sustainable or sorry cooperative outcome i shouldn't have said equilibria the cooperative outcome is not sustainable as an equilibrium uh, yeah this is a prisoner's dilemma even though the numbers like most prisoners dilemmas you've probably seen probably had symmetric numbers where everybody's got the same numbers now what's required for a prisoner's dilemma is that they both have a dominant strategy and joint payoffs are maximized when they have when they play their non-dominant strategy. I selected numbers that were uniformly odd for row player and uniformly even for column player because otherwise there's too much confusion if the numbers are exactly the same whose payoffs are whose, right? And so that's all that's all that's doing. Uh, last thing that I should say is uh, not all games have a dominant strategy. All games have a Nash equilibria. If a game has a dominant strategy, that must be part of any Nash equilibria, right? So if you find a dominant strategy, any Nash equilibria for the game must involve that dominant strategy. And when both players have a dominant strategy, it'll pick out a single Nash equilibria. Sometimes a game might not have Nash equilibria in what we'd say pure strategies, meaning just play top, bottom, or left, right. Instead, you might have to have a probability distribution over them. And if you're interested in that, you can find my video for uh, finding mixed strategy Nash equilibria. But anyway, hope you enjoy the video and I will see you next time.